Chapter 17, The Endocrine System, Part 2. So we're moving on to the adrenal glands. There are two adrenal glands. Each one is slightly superior to the kidneys, so right and left adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are actually two separate glands found in the same structure. So there's a, a dense connective tissue capsule that surrounds the outer tissue, the outer tissue, the adrenal cortex is one gland, and then the inner tissue, the adrenal medulla, is a second gland. So two glands, same area, two, two people, one apartment. So the adrenal cortex produces tons of different hormones. Uh, so we're going to break those hormones into three categories. First category is the mineral corticoids. The mineral corticoids are various hormones that affect the level of electrolytes in the blood. So for instance, they uh, some of them will increase blood levels of sodium and as a consequence also increase the levels of water. So mineral corticoids affecting electrolytes, specifically example increasing blood levels of sodium and water. So if sodium levels are low, it will cause the kidneys to conserve sodium to pull it back into the bloodstream, thereby conserving water. Glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids, surprise, surprise, have to do with glucose. Glucocorticoids stimulate glucose production from amino acids. So the making of glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. So it'll take amino acids and convert them into glucose and also urea, which is a waste product that gets dumped into the bloodstream and eventually removed by the kidneys. And the third category are the androgens. Androgens are uh, sex hormones, sex hormones, and they assist in the early growth of the axillary and pubic hair. So they uh, come to play in the um, beginning of puberty. They also have a role uh, back when we were an embryo. The adrenal medulla, adrenal medulla makes two hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are collectively commonly known as adrenaline. And as we know, epinephrine and norepinephrine help to stimulate the fight or flight response. So when they are released into the bloodstream, they will do things like increase the heart rate, increase and deepen breathing, increase the blood flow of to the skeletal muscles, increase the release of glucose to be used by those skeletal muscles, suppress the digestive system overall, um, and so on, fight or flight responses. And the Adrenal medulla is controlled by nerve impulse direct from the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus will send an impulse to stimulate the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine. Moving on to the pancreas. Here is the pancreas. We know it's a organ of the digestive system. It is also an organ of the endocrine system. Here's the pancreas. It is posterior behind the stomach, found in the abdominal cavity. Look, there's the spleen, there's the duodenum. So it produces two important hormones, glucagon and insulin. Glucagon, its job is to raise blood glucose levels. So if the pancreas detects that glucose levels in the blood are low, it will secrete glucagon. Glucagon will go to various tissues in the body and cause them to increase the release of glucose into the bloodstream. So places like the liver and fatty tissue and muscle tissue stimulate the release of glucose into the bloodstream to raise glucose levels. The other side of the story is insulin. Insulin is released when the pancreas determines that glucose levels in the blood are too high. Too much glucose in the bloodstream, insulin is released, goes out to all those various tissues, and causes them to take up glucose, to remove glucose from the bloodstream, bring it into, say, liver tissue or fat tissue. So lowers glucose levels by increasing the transport of glucose into various cells in the body. As we know, glucose levels are very critical, need to be maintained in the proper uh, range or else it can cause some pretty significant problems for the person. Diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is the inability to use or to produce insulin. So type 1 diabetes, type 1 diabetes is when the person's immune system destroys the cells of the pancreas that produce insulin. 
So someone with type 1 diabetes have lost the cells in their pancreas that produce insulin, so they cannot make insulin. They have to take it uh, as an injection form regularly to help properly regulate the glucose levels in their bloodstream. Then there's type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is where the cells that are supposed to take up the glucose, these cells become less sensitive to the insulin hormone so that then the pancreas has to produce higher levels of insulin to get the same response and that trend just keeps occurring on and on so that the pancreas keeps having to produce more and more insulin to get the exact same response until eventually the pancreas cannot produce enough insulin and is now unable to regulate glucose levels properly. Someone who has diabetes have, can have a variety of symptoms. They can have blurry vision, increased thirst, or maybe urinate. Uh, they feel tired or ill, recurring skin, gum, bladder infections, dry itchy skin, uh, slowly healing cuts and bruises, loss of feeling or tingling in the feet. Um, so if someone has a selection of these symptoms, they may want to get tested to see if they might be developing diabetes. All right, moving on to the pineal gland. The pineal gland is found in the brain. It is also part of the diencephalon. It is also part of the epithalamus of the diencephalon. The pineal gland, it turns out, produces the hormone melatonin. Melatonin helps to induce sleepiness. So during the day when we're getting lots of light by our eyes, the eyes detect the light. This is an inhibiting function prevents the release of melatonin by the pineal gland. Then at night, it gets dark. Uh, that darkness, that lack of light is a stimulus. It stimulates the pineal gland to produce melatonin. Melatonin goes to the hypothalamus, leads to all these various processes that cause us to become sleepy. All right, as we know, our gonads produce hormones. The ovaries produce estrogen and progesterone, very important for regulating the female reproductive cycle. Females produce testosterone, has lots of functions, including regulating sperm production. And that is it for this lecture.